I'm a teacher, and I'm at Heron's Crossing Elementary School here in Airdrie. And last year, I was in kindergarten. And um, we've, we've heard a lot today about inquiry and how important it is and how much we love it for student learning, but we haven't heard a lot about our youngest friends in RVS. So I thought I would love to share a learning journey I went on with our kindergarten friends. Um, so in Division One, it hit me how Hard, like it, it hit me really hard how we really need a universal learning environment along with a universal design for learning to help even young kindergarten students, so four or five years of age, engage in powerful inquiry learning. And I discovered through my year last year and through several inquiry projects that when expectations are high and achievable, students and teachers can partake on learning journeys that result in deep, authentic learning and teaching practices. So I'll give you a little background information. Before I taught in K, I came from a grade six area. So I was used to the kids being very independent, and I was all raring to go for kindergarten, and when I opened the doors, I, I literally froze. I saw some kids screaming, holding on to mom, some kids with their fingers up their nose, kids sharing toys, fighting, and I thought, dear God, how am I gonna teach them inquiry? But I quickly learned that despite the arguing, the crying, the I don't know how to hold a pencil yet, that I don't know how to use scissors yet. They were like little sponges, and they were just so excited to build relationships with their teachers and with peers, and they just were so eager to learn and to please and absorb knowledge. And um, it was really a shock for me that to go from learning basic skills such as zipping up a jacket and holding scissors, that they could partake on authentic inquiry learning journeys. And I showed some pictures up here. In the, in the beginning of kindergarten, they're still learning to do their letters, they're playing, so it's very play-based, just to show a baseline of where they came from at the start of the year. Little four and five-year-olds just excited to be there for three hours a day. I quickly learned how different all my students were. Um, you could tell who went to preschool, who didn't, home experiences, who struggled with speech, fine motor. They came from very different backgrounds, just like any students. And I saw how a universal learning environment combined with universal design for learning would best benefit all my K learners, as it would minimize all the barriers and maximize learning for every single student in my classroom. I wanna share one particular journey I went on with my students with you that, that sort of changed my view of kindergarten and inquiry. We started, we embarked on an inquiry project based on a celebration of the self using self-portraits as a medium. We combined social studies and art and English, and we, we really just embarked on a journey of growth and a celebration because they're four or five. They love themselves. They love to look. They're interested in themselves, and it was really just a really cool project for them to get involved in. These pictures up here are our, um, our first try. There was no guidance or teaching. It provided a benchmark for learning. Um, if you look on the far left, you can see that there's a little bit of face in there, some arms, legs, but uh, <laughs> we have a long way to go. There's no neck, no body, really. And if you look as we go further on to the right, those are my severe OT kids. You can see there's not really any shapes at all, but they're still learning how to hold pencils and colors. And this was their attempt to draw themselves their very first try, and they were, they were pretty proud of that. And they were really excited about this and loved the opportunity to draw themselves and add color. And I thought, well, that would be such a great project for us to go on and really you know, learn about ourselves and how unique they are and hone in on different skills and celebrate them as learners. To start our project on self-portraits, I had the students brainstorm what it looked like, felt like, and sounded like to be real artists, with unparalleled specific specificity required for elementary environment. The Ks needed, needed directly to know, oh, if, if I'm pretending to be an artist and you guys are watching me, what do I look like? What sort of things do you see? How am I acting? What does it sound like in the classroom when people are being artists? How do you feel? Do you feel proud? You're, you're impressed by your work? You're just excited? All those sort of things. And we made anchor charts that they could always refer to. I found that this was such a great step for all my Ks because it gave them something really to link to and they love just being artists in the classroom. Because when it was self-portrait time, they were artists, and they acted like artists, they sounded like artists. People would walk by my class and be like, where are your kids? And they'd look in and they'd be writing, not believing that four and five-year-olds were all sitting quietly for a chunk of time. We did a short artist study. We, we decided we wanted to look at, at real artists in their self-portraits, look at some experts. So we studied some like Van Gogh and Frida Kahlo, et cetera, and we really practiced giving fit, cr critical feedback, excuse me, which I found was an amazing part of our journey and how far it brought my kids. I, like, it's unbelievable to me still. For them to start our first, our first day we did this, they looked and they said, oh, um, I, I like their picture, or they use nice colors. 
Whereas as we grew through the journey, it was comments such as, uh, I really like how they did the shading in the nostrils, and oh, the, the, I can see the different shading techniques and pencil strokes in their eyes, which make it realistic. And coming from four and five-year-olds, that's pretty incredible. We honed in on various skills and continued growing an understanding of UDL and ULE, learning through this project that you tr if you truly have a universal design for learning, it will work for any student in your classroom. Even my students with severe fine motor skills, were, who it was a battle to get hold a pencil, to hold a pencil for agenda time or any other work, would eagerly run to their pencil kits and pull out their, their crayons when they got to start drawing about themselves. Um, we brainstormed what parts of the face were there and, and what sort of techniques we'd use. It was really student-driven. Okay, well, here's our, here's our picture. How can we get there? How can we show the different colors in the face with no colors? And they really brought forth, well, we could use different strokes with our pencil. We could use different shades. But how would we do that? So we brainstormed also. You can see up here they did some techniques. They practiced shading. They practiced holding their pencil in different ways, using, using guidelines, and really deconstructing the face by feature, hair, brows, eyes, mouth, etc. We'd, we'd hone in in and we'd, we'd talk about what parts make up the eyes, what shapes should we use, what shades make it realistic. And I really found that by giving repeated and specific practice and giving formative feedback to themselves and, fears, uh, and their peers, um, they were able to, to really see how their project was developing. And to listen to them give critical feedback to others and to sit and look at their own work, it was amazing how self-directed they became and how they wanted to improve their pictures and their art to make it better for themselves so they could be proud of it, not just because their teacher's saying, oh, go add more detail, but they actually took ownership of their own learning and made an authentic learning practice. Here's one of uh, um, the final outcomes. This is the same girl who, had, in September, had her little pink stick man. And when she was the first one who finished her final project. And when she showed me, Miss B, I'm all done, I literally started crying. I couldn't believe the difference that a four-year-old could draw that. It, it looks... Honestly, like a grade three or four student could have drawn that. Um, if you didn't know the grade, yeah, it could, it could, you would never guess it. I wouldn't have guessed it was kindergarten. And it didn't hit me until the end when I saw the harsh contrast that, that this, this project worked for every single student and promoted self-directed learning and self-efficacy. And by giving them time on task and immediate feedback, both from peers, myself, and practicing self-feedback, they were able to hone in on specific skills and make their prod products the best they possibly could. 21st century competencies were a lived reality for my four and five-year-old students during this project. Case can engage in powerful inquiry learning and expectations for kindergartens can be both high and achievable across the curriculum. I can't tell you how many times I've heard at um, different COPs and talking to other kindergarten teachers, wow, I can't believe your K, teacher, your, your K students were able to, to achieve that. And my response, well, if you set them up for success or you set your goals high enough that are achievable, your students will rise to meet them. Like I said, they're little sponges and they will do anything once they, once they know you believe in them and they have that confidence they can get there. I took the universal learning environment and the universal design for learning I applied in this project and applied it to other aspects of my curriculum as well, especially literacy. By the end of June, I'm proud to say that every single student in my class was reading at or above grade level. Um, and it was fantastic, even the kids who had come with no, no previous reading, no, couldn't even, didn't know which way to hold a book or how to flip pages. By the end of June, they were sent off into grade one, all at or above grade level in reading. This next picture I'm going to show you, the September versus their final outcome. This one hit me the hardest. It was one of my severe OT students. And when I showed his mom his final product, she burst into tears. This one hit me so hard. He was my major OT student who received support throughout the year. He struggled significantly, needed support and reinforcement, holding a pencil, doing anything simple as agenda. And this really hit home that universal learning environments and inquiry projects do minimize barriers and maximize growth for all students. Um, Risk-taking and innovation is not only acceptable and encouraged, but it was celebrated in my class and in the community. I had parent volunteers come in and work in with the students, and they'd just be so excited every day. What step are we on in the self-portrait? Who am I going to work with today? And the fin final products, my kid would want to run around and show volunteers who were in the school. They couldn't wait till new volunteers came in to show them. And it was just really celebrated, and the emails and the, and the calls and the talks I had with parents after showing them these final pro projects were amazing. And they, this mom couldn't believe it. She was astounded. She said, I had no idea my kid who could not hold a pencil to save his life in September. Look at the detail where he did baby lines in the eyebrows and he has lines in his eyes and he's got a rock and mouse going on there. 
And I had a unique position last year. I did kindergarten for half days, and I did fine arts in the school for the other half of the day. After I finished this project with my kindergarten, I thought, hey, this is a really great universal design for learning, created a universal learning environment. All students in my class were successful. I want to try it with the other classes in the school. So I did the same project with all grades one to four in the school. And I have to say that it was effective in each class and they all had successes. I personalized it for every classroom and no two learning journeys were the same for each classroom. But every student in the school, no matter their um, learning style, if they had learning special learning needs or OT skills or speech skills or, or whatever their needs may be, they all experienced some level of success and were proud at the end of the day when they had in their final project and could, could uh, share it with moms and dads and peers. Um, this project really showed me that if, you're, if you use innovative ideas and you're very transparent with your expectations of your students and show high and achievable goals for them, they, they can accomplish anything. And we uncovered their talents and the authentic learning experience through the passion and power of inquiry and art this year. And I had the opportunity to move up to grade one this year and I looped with some of my students and we're already doing amazing projects. And it hit me listening to a lot of the other TED Talks today if kindergartens can become self-directed learners and critical thinkers and can perform time on task and give feedback to each other and self and can work self-directed for hour at a time without teacher direct, um, direct teacher work, I can't imagine and cannot wait to see what they can do throughout the rest of their education career. Thank you.